Hey, are you struggling to get traction on LinkedIn? Are you connecting with people, but it's not really working out so well? In this video, I'm going to talk about a few ways that you can use LinkedIn to grow by leaps and bounds. This is especially important if you are trying to target people who are basically uh, business professionals or if they spend time on LinkedIn. And I think LinkedIn is growing even more important just because more people are using it. They have great new features. They have ad platforms that work awesome. So if you're trying to grow your business, especially if you're B2B, this is going to be very, very good for you and it's gonna help you to grow your LinkedIn presence. What's up everybody? My name is Brandon Brashears and I make daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're trying to grow your business or your brand with digital marketing, please consider subscribing and be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Comment below if you like it and let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you. I make daily digital marketing videos about everything from pay-per-click ads to SEO to anything related to digital marketing basically. All right, so LinkedIn is growing in popularity continually and it's been actually on the radar for a lot of years for people, but especially recently, it seems like it's getting even more important for especially business to business people. So if you're trying to grow your brand or your business, it can seem kind of like there's a lot of noise, number one, and it's also difficult to make actual connections with people. So I'm gonna tell you a few things that I see people doing that I think is terrible and it helps to kind of know the, the worst kind of practices that you should avoid doing. Number one, LinkedIn is not a resume posting service. When you have a profile, it needs to be in terms of what can you do for the people that you're trying to target. So for example, if you say, hey, I'm the VP of sales at so-and-so, and you just put your title there. I think that having your title is good potentially, but if you want to, you know, have the, the byline, make it, you know, I am help, so target market achieve end result that you're trying to do, right? So that is helpful, number one. If you frame what you do in terms of how you help people, when you send a connection invitation, you're gonna be able to see right away, hey, I help veterinarians attract new clients and customers. Like that's for, for me, right? My target market is veterinary practices or I help small businesses grow with digital marketing, right? So what is that the end goal that I am looking to help my customers and clients with? And if you frame it in that kind of a term, it's going to be helpful. The other thing is in your bio, people typically use it kind of like a very boring resume. So when people, when you send a connection request, a lot of times people will click on your profile, they'll take a look and they'll read your bio. And so it's important that again, you frame that in terms of what you can do to help people. So um, don't use it as a resume. That's very, very boring. And that's what most people do. The second thing that you need to do is you absolutely have to have a professional picture on there and it has to be of you typically. Now I know that um, there's a lot of weirdos on there, especially if you are a woman. There are guys that do like dating requests and all kinds of crappy things. Um, I think that if you're a woman who's getting those kind of requests, you should publish those guys' names because they're jerks and they shouldn't be using that platform to basically social catcall people. That's just my kind of perspective. I think it's really crappy. Um, that being said, I think though having your picture and your face is good for branding, especially if you are going to be doing meetings on Zoom or um, in person at trade shows, it just is really important for people to see you and be able to know you. So that seems like a no brainer also. Let's talk about messaging and connecting and actually creating connections with people. I think that a lot of times people will say, hey, I wanted to reach out because I have this service and this service does X, Y, and Z. When can we follow up, right? That's like the pattern of messages that I get specifically a lot. It's super annoying. People are basically taking your inbox and they're putting their um, agenda at hand and they're like, hey, here's what I do. I want you to be a client and I want, I want, I want, right? It's not a value proposition whatsoever. So um, one of the niches that I work in is the veterinary industry. I work with um, veterinarians. And so my messaging and the content that I put out, I spend a lot of time creating content. So I say, hey, my name is Brandon. I have a podcast that helps veterinary practices attract, engage, and retain clients. It's completely free. You can check it out at veterinarymarketingpodcast.com. By the way, be sure to let me know if you have any marketing needs or any questions, I'm always happy to help, right? So I'm not saying, hey, I do AdWords. You wanna buy my AdWords? I'm offering value in advance and building out a connection with a person. Pe people will typically say, oh, thanks. You know, I'll pass that forward to my practice manager or that's awesome, I'll go check it out. And then I follow up typically and say, hey, just wanted to see how it was going. 
do you do any digital marketing? Are you trying to grow your, your business or your brand with digital marketing? And so they'll sometimes respond. Um, and if they do respond, I typically then offer again another resource, which is, by the way, I have a free uh, Facebook group where people collaborate and they talk about marketing. You can get help, ask questions, answer questions. It's a great place filled with about 750 veterinary professionals and then send a link to that. So again, I'm not going in for the quick sale, right? It's the long game. I know that it typically takes a long time, especially for an industry like the veterinary industry, um, where the sales cycle is longer just because people are super busy. It's a, an old fashioned, slower industry. And um, so if I try to rush the sale, I'm just gonna come off spammy. So depending on what your business is like, it's important that you're offering value in advance and really trying to build a connection and get an understanding of what these people are like. I think that if you just approached it like you would a networking event instead of just like a, a pitch fest, right? You're, when, you, when you're actually at a networking event where there's interesting people and you're trying to connect and help them, you're going to not just be like, hey, I do AdWords, buy, buy my AdWords you should buy my AdWords or, you know, hey, I sell pharmaceutical equipment. You should buy my ultrasound or, hey, you know, I sell whatever it is that you sell. Try to get an understanding of what they're looking for, how you can help them and what are their, their main needs and their wants. And then having resources like content that you can use to push people to content to further the relationship is going to be really, really helpful. So that would be my number one suggestion is don't try to rush the sale, actually try to build a relationship and don't just go for the quick score, but build a, a relationship that lasts. I would love to know though, what is your favorite thing about LinkedIn? Um, I totally think video is amazing there. You should be posting content specifically on LinkedIn, um, but I would love to know what your thoughts are. Be sure to comment below with any thoughts that you have. And if you need help with anything, comment below. I'm always happy to help and I hope that you have a fantastic day. Be sure to subscribe here for daily marketing videos and I'll see you on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.